The County of Los Angeles Department of Public Works established the Smart Gardening Program as an innovative and informative program to keep our environment flourishing for many years to come. Today, the Smart Gardening Program has evolved into an exceptional and easily executed series of popular and proven techniques with benefits that are achieved when we make a concerted effort to think smart and get with the program. Are you ready to do something that will make a world of difference to the environment? Something that not only makes your lawn healthier and greener, but gives you more leisure time to enjoy it? Then you're ready to learn about grass recycling. Of all nature's plant life, grass is probably the most visible. And because it's all around us, grass is the one form of vegetation that we're most likely to take for granted. But everywhere you go, chances are you'll see grass on our golf courses, in our public parks, around our homes. Even in the heart of busy urban areas, grass is a welcome and calming sight. And like all living things, it needs care and nurturing to survive. Glad you could join us. I'm Sue Nelson, and today I'm talking with Frank McDonough. Come on over here, Frank. Frank is a botanist at the LA County Arboretum, and today he's gonna be sharing a few steps with us and about how we can improve and protect these tiny fibers of green that carpet our planet. Well, I think we can all agree that our yards and cities would look pretty grim without grass. That's true, but lawn has other functions besides just making your property look better. Really, what other functions? Well, we all know how hard it can rain here in Los Angeles County. I'll say, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, look out. Well, as bad as it gets, it could be much worse if we didn't have grass. See, grass acts as a natural sponge. It soaks up the rain, but when too much rain comes down too fast, the soil's in danger of being washed away. Okay, so that's what causes mud and landslides then, right? Right. But the interlocking network of roots beneath our grassy lawns holds the soil in place and prevents it from shifting or being washed away. So grass acts like a thick layer of glue that holds the ground in place. And it also holds nutrients in place, saving them for our lawns and nearby environments. Well, because of its natural absorbency, then it would stand to reason that grass would play an important role in reducing the amount of contaminants that could pollute our beaches and coastal waters. Now you understand why grass is so important to our homes and cities. There's a lot more to it besides the beauty on top. Okay, well what can we do to ensure that these pastures remain green and healthy? Well, there are several things we can do, but it all boils down to two basic concepts. Lawn care and grass recycling. Sounds easy enough. Where do we start? Where everybody else with the lawn starts. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. I know I have spent many a weekend dreading that chore. <laughs> well, love it or hate it, lawn mowing is an essential step in lawn care and grass recycling. But the essential key to grass recycling is to leave the clippings where they are. Do you need a special lawn mower for grass recycling? No, any mower will do as long as you leave the clippings where they are. Newer mowers are designed for mulching. They clip the grass into finer pieces. But you can purchase a mulching kit or a mulching blade to do this with your existing mower. A little untidy though, isn't it? Not as long as you cut the grass to its proper height. Wait a second, so lawns have a proper height? Yeah, sure they do. As this chart shows, there are a number of different grass types, and each one has an ideal height to ensure its health and vitality. As you can see, the ideal height ranges from three quarters of an inch high to two and a half inches high. Okay, so it's important to adjust the mower to cut the type of grass you have to its proper height. Absolutely, never cut your lawn more than a third of its recommended height. So what happens if you do? Well, you could severely damage individual grass plants. This could lead to a dull, lifeless looking lawn, or worse, kill it entirely. How often should a lawn be mowed? It varies, but you should leave as much time between cuttings as possible. Doing this allows the grass plants to recover from the previous cutting. And it also allows time for whoever cuts it to recover. How fast your lawn grows and how much wear and tear it receives dictates how frequently you'll mow it. 
Just remember not to mow it more than a third of its recommended height. Point taken. And if you have a gardener, ask them to follow the techniques of grass recycling. Now there are some people who rely on grass clippings as part of their green materials for their composting needs. Any tips for them? Yes, they should rotate their method. One week they should leave their grass clippings on their lawn, then the following week put your clippings in your compost bin as part of your green materials. By following the simple rotation, you'll be able to keep your lawn tidy and to put your clippings to good use in your compost bin. And they won't be clogging up our landfills. That's the idea. Where to next? I'm glad you asked. Nice place. <laughs> but why are we here? Well, since we're going to be talking about fertilizing your lawn, I thought this would be the appropriate place. Aha, uh -huh. going right to the source, so to speak. <laughs> well, let me just say that grass recycling does reduce the need for fertilization. But if you believe you need to add fertilizer to your lawn, then this is the approach you should take. Not all fertilizers are organic. There are several effective chemical-based fertilizers on the market as well. But before you start adding fertilizer to your lawn, it's a good idea to have your soil tested. And that's pretty easy to do. You just have to contact a local soils testing laboratory or your county agricultural extension service agent to find out how to sample and submit your soil for analysis. Testing will determine not only your soil's fertility, but which nutrients you need to add as well. Such as? Well, the most common soil nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So, if your soil is rich in nitrogen and low in potassium, you need to add a fertilizer that has more potassium than nitrogen. Makes sense. Okay, suppose our soil test comes back and tells us that we need a little fertilizer pick-me-up. How often should we apply it? As these charts indicate, not all grasses are the same. Some are cool season grasses, which do well in cooler climates and some are warm season grasses, which perform extremely well here in sunny Southern California. So the type of grass you have dictates when and how often you should apply the fertilizer to the lawn. Exactly. However, we found that applying small amounts of fertilizer more regularly is much more effective than large amounts less frequently. What's the most effective way to apply fertilizer? A rotary spreader is the best tool for this kind of job. It will reduce or eliminate streaks of different shades of green caused by uneven distribution. What about spreading it by hand? Not a good idea. Getting a nice even spread by hand is difficult, even for a trained professional. The spreader it is then. Anything else we should know? Yes, it's important to keep fertilizer off of non-lawn areas like sidewalks, driveways, and streets. We need to keep chemicals from finding their way into our storm and sewer systems. Good point. Runoff from sprinklers or hoses can carry contaminants like fertilizer and pesticides into our storm drains, and it'll pollute our beaches and oceans. I'd like to thank Frank McDonough for showing us that lawn care and grass recycling can make a world of difference to our homes, our neighborhoods, and the overall health of the entire environment. Glad to do it, Sue. Maintaining a lush, healthy lawn is not only easy and affordable, but it gives anyone who has one a great sense of pride and satisfaction. It can also significantly reduce the amount of grass waste we send to our landfills. So do yourself and the environment a favor. Recycle those grass clippings and put them to use where they'll do the most good, in your own yard and garden. So until next Wait, time... Wait, aren't you forgetting something? Oh, right. Grass recycling is just another one of the techniques featured in the countywide Smart Gardening Program. For greener, healthier lawns and gardens, think smart. And get with the program. The Smart Gardening Program, providing simple practices to help you develop healthy and beautiful lawns and gardens. With your involvement, we can make a world of difference. For more information about the Smart Gardening Program, call 1-888-CLEAN-LA or visit the website at www.smartgardening.com. Call or log on today to discover how you can think smart and get with the program.